Hi Bulldogs, Chris Bryant here. Today we've got a CCNP route and T-Shoot video boot camp for you. We're going to be on the live equipment here in about 30 seconds and we're going to spend just about all of our time there today. As a matter of fact, we're going to spend all of it there because we're going to look at a detail of route redistribution that in my opinion really gets overlooked because we have so many small details with route redistribution, right? It's a little bit different with every protocol and here today we're going to work with OSPF and look at a default and some metrics and then just take it from there so some good stuff here let's go ahead and dive in and the reason I really want to show you this on the live routers I mean I always like to do that but this is one of those defaults that it's like to me when you learn about rip for the first time and you learn you know which versions are sent and accepted by default and it strikes you as kind of strange this struck me as kind of strange too so let's go ahead and dive in at least the first time I saw it so this is what we've got to work with we've got five loopbacks that we're going to redistribute into OSPF and this is about as plain and blah as an OSPF config is ever going to get We've got a, one simple adjacency here that we're going to be working with, primarily the 1 to .2. The 1 to .3 we're going to leave alone right now. We're just going between routers 1 and 2. So let's go ahead and a quick reminder here about a detail that I talk about a lot, but it's worth talking about. Redistribute connected is by itself a legal command in OSPF. So especially for you troubleshooters out there, you got to know that. So if I hit enter here, it's going to be a legal command, but it's not going to redistribute my subnets. That's going to be a problem. So I'm going to go ahead and put subnets here. And this is a very typical command, you know, just redistribute connected subnets by itself. So let's go ahead and hit enter. And we'll go down to router 2. And you can see all the routes here now, and a couple of things to note. First off, they're all marked E2, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. And also we see the default seed metric of 20. And the reason that we, and that is the OSPF default. Now the reason we're only seeing 20 is because with an E2 route, the metric you're going to see here is the metric from the ASBR to the destination network, not the local router. Because right now, router 1, of course, is the ASBR. It's performing the route redistribution. So it's, it would be 0 since it's redistributing only directly connected networks right now, but it adds that seed metric of 20. So let's say, you know, that just struck me as odd the first time I saw it because I was like, why doesn't it just give you the metric for the entire path? Well, if you want that metric for the entire path, you need to make them E1 routes when you do the redistribution. And this is something we just have to have memorized because the code table is not going to be much help when you just see E1 OSPF external type 1, E2 OSPF external type 2. It's not going to tell you what the difference is between the two. It's one of those things we just have to know. So what we will do first here with OSPF is take off that previous command. And now we're going to do a redistribute connected subnets. Metric type is what we're going to change here, not the metric. And then finally one, and you can see the iOS help. iOS is not much help here because uh, again, it's not explaining to you the difference. It's just one of those things we got to know. So let's go ahead and hit enter, and let's run show IP route OSPF. And notice now two things have changed. First off, all of the routes are E1s, and they're all showing the full metric from the local router to the final destination. So you would know just by looking at this that with a metric of 84, and you know a seed metric of 20 is involved, that leaves 64, and you know what that is, right? The default cost for what kind of interface in OSPF? A serial interface, show IP OSPF interface serial zero, backs us up. There's the cost among all this other helpful information of 64. So that's the difference between the E1 and E2 routes, a very important difference. I'm sure you'll agree with me, and it's one that we have to know because in this case, uh, the iOS and the router is not going to help us out with that much at all. I want to thank you for watching today's CCMP video boot camp. Make sure to join me online at Twitter, Facebook, the blog, and YouTube. We've got plenty more videos and new certifications on the way, as well as some free ebooks coming to you from Amazon. I'm Chris Bryan, and thanks for making TBA part of your certification success story.